about the four years Okay, this is my microphone. He's, he's an attorney. He has a weekly column in the Philadelphia Tribune. That's it. Greatest in North America. If you don't know, if you don't know, if you're not ready for it, you're black. Michael's helped us to understand that. Mm -hmm. He helped us to understand our roots and the role that we should be playing as leaders, as members of our community. And I just want to thank you for being the angriest black man in the world. Stanley's introduction is going to be longer than my presentation. <laughs> my presentation, I'm just happy to be here to celebrate the greatest city council person in Philadelphia. In <laughs> talking about Harriet Tubman, the Philadelphia Collection. We have the largest collection on the Underground Railroad in the country. And so I encourage you all to come. And I'm just, once again, I just want to thank you, Councilwoman thank you. Blackwell. We um, love you, and whenever you need from us here. to do anything, we're there thank for you. And thank you also, uh, Stan. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, we have two other doctors. I just want to bring three. I want to bring you to attention. Uh, Dr. On um, November the 16th, Broad Street will be named for the Lion of Zion and Lady Reverend Lee of the South. We have this flag here. Uh, while I, I take credit for being my mentor, but I know he mentors many of us in this room yeah, and around the yeah. city. And so we hope that we hope that you can make it and see that, okay? And uh, most recently, 
uh, you have been hearing about uh, Ambassador Eric Conner, the United States Ambassador, the Ambassador from African Union to the United States. And uh, she's been telling the world uh, how we have continued to be exploited from slavery on to now. This is pointed out several, several things. So I just want to announce that we're planning for her to be here on November the 21st. We're working on that, working that date out now. And we'll get that to you. It won't be in City Hall. Uh, council lady will host her. She's been here before. So we're working out the details of that. Okay? Finally, what I'd like to do is you should have in your package if you don't need to get it. Uh, information on the fall programs of the African American Museum of Corruption and also how to become a member. And this is, this is what I got to say about that. It's going to be great. Hey, y'all got to join. Mm -hmm. You got to know what the hell is going on. Uh, uh, these artists, too. You know, the Washington Museum, the African American Museum, they ain't throw these things away. Mm -hmm. It's for mm -hmm. us to maintain and keep up. Okay, so please take your time, get a membership. When you come, when your grandchildren come, at least get the membership so the community uh, museum here in Lexington will understand not only the commitment, but that will give them the resources they need to go get more information. And I think Dr. Blockson has something like 500,000, 700,000 artifacts of the of history. So I just want to beg you, please, Take some time, join the museum, fill up the museum, visit the Blockchain Museum, and please, uh, we need you to be a part of it and help sustain these institutions, okay? It's very important. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to just uh, stop there. I wanted to let everybody have a minute, Council Lady, to say hello and whatever, but a minute. <laughs>
school relay day in Philadelphia. October the 18th, we had a book launch here at, uh, at the museum. So we want to present you with a book that was signed by uh, John and Donnie Wilkie. John Wilkie is the uh, musical director. Donnie Wilkie is the artistic director. They both uh, joined Cool Melee in 1971, the same time Sister Pat did. So we want you to have this. You're going to enjoy the history because Cool Melee's headquarters for decades was at Lee Cultural Center in your district. Yes, so, sure, mm -hmm. so we want you to have this. Thank you. When I graduated from Adelphi University, I came to Philadelphia, and I wanted to dance. And so I made friends quickly with Baba Crowder, and Dottie and Wilkie and I, we were part of Kulu Malay at that time. We performed all over the city. And Baba would get to yelling and scream at us, but we would all oh, hang Lord. in there. We'd talk bad and put our faces, but we would get back on that stage and we would stomp our feet and we would dance. And I'm telling you, from that, I learned a different kind of discipline. So I will always appreciate Cool Malay and having been one of the earliest members. We all always appreciate Amy Flashwell for everything she has done for our people and everything she will continue to do for our people, because she's not going to handle it. Thank you. Ado. Amen. Ado. Amen. We have something in our African culture called Sankofa, or people call it Sankofa. Sankofa means go back yes. and get it and know your stuff. Now, I've been looking in my car and I found something for our councilwoman that I've had for a long time. We gave her an award in 2006. <laughs> and this came from the Gandangwe Educational and Cultural Foundation of Philadelphia. She was given an award. It was supposed to be picked up. It was never picked up, and it went to the back of my car. <laughs> and guess what? I just found it yesterday. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to present it to her. There are other things she's going to be getting, but I'm going to give her this award. Thank you. For community Beautiful. service award that was given to her by the Gandangwe Cultural Educational Foundation of Pennsylvania, 2006. Wow. So you can tell how long she's been working. Thank you. I am honored. What I else thank you both the organizations and all who are here. I am so grateful. I'm so grateful. You all are so kind to me. And it is an honor to serve. Thank you all. Good evening. Good evening. In the tradition that Brother Court tells us, do I have permission of the elders to proceed? Thank you. It is indeed my honor to, uh, first of all, to even know the Honorable Jamie L. Blackwell. You know, I was talking to someone and we say, even though we have other persons are our council persons, it's Councilwoman Blackwell that we go to when we, we want to get something done. All right, love. Uh, you may recall at the last commission meeting, I came forward and mentioned that there was going to be a celebration in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, that took place on November 2nd. No November 2nd commemorates the 89th anniversary of the coronation of Haile Selassie. And we let acknowledge that. So it's important for us to recognize those in our community who are about the business of us. Uh, sometimes we don't celebrate those who are really the, the substantive people. And Councilwoman Jamie Blackwell, there's no one more substantive than you. So uh, the event was hot. It was standing room only at the Ethiopian Embassy. 
and I would uh, implore all of you to do some reading about Hallie Selassie because I didn't know the full significance of his coordination. Um, one of the things that was presented at the program was the fact that he was the first uh, African leader to come to the United States and address our Congress. He also went to the UN. Uh, some say he was the father of the unity, uh, the, uh, the organization of African unity coming together because of his leadership. In addition, a major thing was that he broke with tradition and insisted that his wife also be a part of the coronation. And so it was the Haile Selassie uh, coronation and the uh, Mena Afo uh, coronation. Uh, part of that program also showed the actual filming, film uh, the whole uh, coronation, the ceremony. And so we have a job to do between now and November 2nd, 2020, because that will be the 90th anniversary. And we intend to have a huge celebration from persons all over the world coming. And I had the honor of being on the program with one of the descendants of Holly Selassie. And so um, I have to give thanks to Councilwoman Blackwell because it was, although my councilman's signature was on the proclamation, uh, Councilwoman Blackwell's staff put together the proclamation and I presented it at the event. And so the organization that put it on is the Universal Development of Rastafari, known as IDOR, and they asked that I present to her, uh, this is a, a book entitled Holly Selassie, The First Teachings for Life in La Vida. And so Councilwoman Blackwell, it is with great pleasure and honor that I present this to you. Thank you. Oh, I'm so grateful to receive it. And uh, thank you for all you do all over the world, teaching and, and being your part in helping to run universities in Africa. Thank you for being a part of this wonderful, wonderful program and of making this presentation. I'm honored. Now, my uh, role up here is two prongs, so. Thank you. It is also uh, my pleasure to introduce a person to you. Uh, hopefully you all have one of the flyers regarding the life story of Mahalia Jackson. Um, many of you may know um, Judge Joyce Eubanks. I had the pleasure of working in her first campaign and for 30 years, more than 30 years, initially 25 years, she served as a public defender. Most of those years were as a federal public defender. Um, and then for nearly the last 10 years, she has been uh, on the municipal court. I know no one that has been more committed to representing people, supporting the people, and putting uh, aside her own personal gain to uh, be a part and help the community. Well, uh, some of us decided that she is about to retire, and some of us decided that we wanted to do, and, and if you know her, she's not someone that's about pomp and circumstance. So we were able to get her to agree to allow us to host um, a set, to host an afternoon, actually, at the life story of Mahalia Jackson, because we are going to be honoring two great African American women, Judge Joyce Eubanks and uh, Mahalia Jackson. I had the pleasure of meeting, it, it turns out that uh, attorney uh, Rhonda Hill Wilson and I and her husband were having dinner. And this gentleman came up to our table and offered us a flyer. And I said to him, well, I've already bought 20 tickets, uh, so I know about it. But you know, we talk about supporting one another, we talk about entrepreneurship, but then when it's time to put the money on the table, sometimes we get amnesia. So I was, I'm grateful to Councilwoman Blackwell and Stan Strada for allowing me to bring the producer to our meeting 
and to give you more information about the, the life story of Mahalia Jackson. Uh, Mr. Norbert Brown Jr. is someone who participated. He's, you may not have heard his name, but he was involved with such productions as the Jefferson, the Jeffersons and so on and so forth. And I'll let him give more details about that. But the bottom line is that he is someone who has put his resources forward to produce something that we can be proud of. And I didn't even know a lot of the things about Mahalia Jackson until he was telling us, such as the fact that she used her millions when our African-American soldiers came back from World War and were being discriminated against and were not getting resources. She used her millions to support them. How many people knew that? Two people. So we have a lot to learn and uh, we can do this. And so we need to support uh, Mr. Norbert um, Brown Jr. in this effort because if we don't support that which is ours, then can we complain when our things are not going forward? So with that, I have the honor of introducing Norbert Brown Jr., the producer for the life story of Mahalia Jackson. I just would like to say to Ms. Blackwell that everybody talks about you. I've been here from LA, it's freezing outside, and I said I would come here today because not only I would fight the cold, but because of your warm heart and the things you do for the community, we also want to invite you for two VIP seats to the life story of Mahalia Jackson. And also, you will go backstage and meet them and get t shirts and programs with the staff, and the leading lady is Ann Nesby from the Sound of Blackness, nine-time Grammy Award winner. Uh, this show is a show that you should see. I did, I wrote the life story of Marty Gay, I wrote the life story of Jackie Wilson, I wrote the life story of Rick James, and out of all the life stories, Mahalia Jackson is the one that you gotta see. We're gonna be in town, please get your tickets and come out to the Met. We are the first African-American stage play, serious stage play, that's going to be there. And we're going to be there on the 23rd for two shows, and we're going to be there on the 24th for one show. Let me tell you a little about why I'm connected to Philadelphia. My uncle was Johnny Tiller, who's Make a Love to Your Old Lady Disco Lady. I used to carry his bags, but I used to help him write some of his songs. So he introduced me to a man named Norm Lair. <laughs> Norm Lair in 1971 flew me out to Philadelphia to meet y'all postman in 30th Street Station. That was George Jefferson. Me and George Jefferson, Sherman Hensley, went back to LA and made history on All in the Family. I was one of the first youngest Tony Award winners. I was one of the first, you can read about me, my name is on there, Nova Brown Jr., but I was one of the first youngest Tony Award winning because I went to Broadway and wrote on a little play that we thought was going to be nothing, wound up being a Tony Award winning show called Bubble and Brown Sugar. <laughs> and then I came back to Philadelphia and I opened up two mental health centers. One is on 2810 North Borough Street, and we opened up another one in the Northeast. What I do is give back to the community because your blessing that God's give you is not yours, it's for everybody. And that's what I believe in for the last 40 years that I've been doing this. And then the, what Mahalia Jackson did in 1962, she came to Philadelphia to follow LeVon. All of the black soldiers that was coming home to Philadelphia, she fed all of them for over 90 days. She fed them, she didn't want them to go to the soup lines because she said they was better than that. And she got every black soldier food, and I mean good food. Now, Mahalia was born crippled. She couldn't walk or nothing, and you will see that in the show. She prayed and said, God, I'm gonna stand up. She stood up and never sat down. She also, in the show that you will see, 
that you never saw before. You're going to see a riot scene on a musical stage play. You never saw that before. But Mahalia Jackson gave up all her millions of dollars to march from Salma, Mahalia. And she told Dr. King that you don't have to worry about it because me and God is the voice for the civil rights movement. And all of the songs that they sung in the civil rights movement, Mahalia did it. Then it was a young, young lady, 18 years old, that Mahalia passed the crown to. That was Aretha Franklin. And they both sung the same song at Dr. King's funeral. Soon I will be done, and precious Lord, take my hand. He wanted that. And in this story, you will see Dr. King say that to her. And history is made. You need to bring your kids. You need to bring everybody, because they need to know where we came from. Because it wouldn't be Beyonce without Mahalia. It wouldn't be Aretha Franklin without Mahalia. Everybody needs to know, and the songs and the music is great. I even have a part, but I said a bad actor, but I can't find myself. <laughs> But I do have a part, but I want everybody to come out and celebrate next week at the Met. I want us all to come out, and what I'm going to do is pay for all VIP parking, because parking is terrible. I will pay for everybody to say that they came here today, I will pay for their parking. As long as y'all guys get tickets, as long as y'all remember, together we are a village. Without each other, we can't do nothing. Thank you. November 12th, 2019, African American Museum of Philadelphia. Susanna J. Dodds. Yes, Peace Scientist.org. Oh.